Colin Phillips here, and along with Mike Gavin and Warren Manning, I'm happy to present the Introduction to Focus Cardiac Ultrasound, Part 1. So, uh, as a brief overview, during these two lectures, we'll go over what Focus Cardiac Ultrasound is, we'll review standard views, which will make up the bulk of the lectures, um, we'll share some of the resources, and then uh, go over example diagnoses. Um, with each lecture, if you're doing this with a group, you can uh, break off for the second half of the lecture, um, because each lecture will take about 15-20 minutes uh, and spend the rest of the hour uh, scanning and reviewing uh, uh, the different uh, views. The goal at the end of today is to simply get the heart on the screen and the parasternal long axis and subcostal views. So to begin, uh, what is focused cardiac ultrasound? Well, it's a lot of things. Um, it is goal-directed, uh, problem-oriented, limited in scope. It's a simplified, time-sensitive uh, exam that's easily repeatable. Um, you can make qualitative or semi-quantitative uh, uh, decisions based on what you see. And it's done at the bedside and typically by uh, clinicians. In other words, you're looking at the heart and the associated structures and you're adding this on to your physical exam. In uh, 2013, um, uh, the American Society of Cardiography published a uh, series of guidelines for focused cardiac ultrasound, and it underlines that what you see is not definitive. Um, you need to integrate it with other bedside information to form an initial diagnostic impression uh, that um, will help guide further uh, uh, decision making. Uh, whether it be imaging or diagnostic modality. So in other words, this is an uh, addition to your physical exam. Um, you can ask the following questions uh, regarding your left ventricular uh, function and dimensions, right ventricular function, volume status, presence of an effusion out of the pericardial space, uh, any signs of chronic heart disease, valvular issues, or potential large masses. And really when you're doing this, you're asking the question, yes or no, do these things exist? So for example, when you're looking at the left ventricle, you can make a comment that the left ventricle is globally hypokinetic. It's not as important to say, well, the EF is 35%, it was 45% earlier, although you can get that sense as well. Um, but it's more of a qualitative, not quantitative um, uh, uh, decision or call that you're making. Um, and also, uh, uh, you can make uh, calls about whether there's any regionality to this dysfunction, for example, of the left ventricle. Not a whole lot of data exists regarding color Doppler. Um, just to emphasize, this is not a full echo, um, meaning this is an add-on to the physical exam. Uh, there's no ECG gating, there's no M mode. The spatial resolution is not as great as an echo. Uh, likewise, the temporal resolution uh, is not as good. There's specifically no uh, uh, spectral or tissue Doppler. There is limited penetration. Excuse me, into the tissue, um, uh, and then there's at this point no standardized storage or review. Um, if you see something abnormal, you uh, should basically order a full echo to confirm your findings. So other limitations, uh, perhaps most importantly, uh, it's what you do with the information that you see. So just like the stethoscope, the most important tool is between the ears. Uh, you need to understand what you're looking at, the sensitivity and specificity of the findings. Uh, there's no spectral lapilla, as you've mentioned, so you can't make calls on pericardial constriction, pulmonary hypertension, diastolic dysfunction. You also cannot quantify uh, the amount of valve regurgitation. You can get a sense based on um, how far the jet is going, but uh, in all honesty, it's the thickness of the jet, not the distance back into either left atrium, left or right atrium that uh, truly matters uh, in terms of how severe uh, the regurgitation is. And measuring things like PISA just isn't done on a handheld unit. You can miss things, aortic dissections, uh, some subtle regional wall motion abnormalities, uh, aneurysms, intracardiac masses, depending on how big they are, um, right ventricular hypertrophy, uh, thrombi, things on the valves, actual valvular stenosis, and loculated pericardial effusions if it's hidden in a view that you're just not able to get at. So a brief word about the technology. Um, for us, we use the V-Scan, uh, flip it open, it basically turns on almost instantaneously. 
it identifies a new case number, date, time, but no patient identifier. Uh, you have an option of recording audio over each uh, uh, study that you do to uh, remind yourself of what it is you're looking at. Um, there's an iPod-like intuitive interface, phased array probe, um, uh, and a three and a half uh, inch screen with a 240 by 320 pixel resolution. Uh, you have options of 2D and color flow Doppler, um, and you can make some post hoc distance measurements. Uh, and here's the unit uh, with getting the heart on the screen. So as we go through and as you're doing your own scanning, um, it's important to remember which way the marker is facing, uh, as this is how the image will be represented on the actual screen. Um, uh, we'll emphasize this a couple different ways, but the right ventricle is actually the anterior ventricle, and the thing you see most close to the chest wall um, uh, in the peristernal long axis. Um, to sharpen your image, uh, you basically make small adjustments with your hand to try to make uh, um, the image brighter, and one way to remember that is to just go towards the light. Um, if possible, reposition the patient, for example, left lateral decubitus uh, to get the apical views, which we'll talk about in the second lecture. Save your images and always ask for help. So uh, during the next few uh, images here, we'll watch this arrow move around. So for the standard views, today peristernal long and subcostal views. Uh, this is again from the uh, 2013 JACE article. Uh, they actually recommend starting uh, down in the sub subxiphoid subcostal view. Um, for the uh, focus cardiac ultrasound, I like starting at uh, the peristernal long. Um, which is uh, um, uh, uh, number three. So um, this is what you see with the peristernal long. Um, this is what you see with the subcostal long. Uh, and here are the different chambers uh, that are represented here. So, for example, the peristernal long, as we mentioned, right ventricle is actually the anterior one. This is the thing you see first as you're sitting above the chest wall, left ventricle, left atrium. Uh, markers pointing off towards the right shoulder. Uh, down here in the subcostal long, markers pointing in the opposite direction. So now instead of the left ventricle being off to the left, left ventricle is off to the right of the screen. Obviously patient's left still. Um, and again, remember uh, 3D thoracic anatomy. So right ventricle is anterior ventricle. Oops. And uh, base of the heart, apex of the heart, um, along the long axis to get the peristernal long, you're pointing towards the right shoulder. So again, here's the peristernal long axis view. Um, markers off to the right shoulder. You're sitting at uh, spot number three. Um, uh, and this is what you're trying to get, basically putting the mitral and aortic valves in the same view. So aortic, aortic valve, mitral valve. Um, and then here's a, a graphic imitation of it. Left ventricle, left atrium, aorta, right ventricular aflo tract, mitral valve, aortic valve. And then you see that when you have the marker pointing off this way. And by convention, we use the marker uh, basically in the opposite direction, but still going off to the right. So um, as we mentioned, the markers on the uh, patient's left, uh, uh, actually the right of the the screen as you're looking at it. This is the opposite from other radiology ultrasound imaging. Um, again, mitral and aortic valve should be put in the same view. Mitral, aortic. Here's your anterior septum. The way to remember this, A for anterior, A for aortic. Um, they run together. So anytime you have the aortic valve, you have the anterior septum. And across from the anterior septum is the inferior lateral wall of the left ventricle. And this uh, uh, Echodense uh, lucency represents the pericardium. To get the subcostal view, uh, you take an overhand grip, whether when you're up here you're holding it like a pencil. Uh, down here it's an overhand grip. Your marker is now flipped to the right, um, to your right, the patient's left. Um, and here we are down here. So when you do that, um, you see again right ventricle, right atrium first and left ventricle, left atrium, a little bit deeper. Uh, this represents the liver. Uh, and now to hit a couple of example diagnoses. So for each of these, um, we're going to ask what the view is, which walls are shown, 
and then what is wrong. So this was a 40-year-old gentleman uh, who presented uh, with shortness of breath, cool extremities. And after a quick exam, we brought out the uh, handheld ultrasound to look at uh, his heart, and this is what we saw. So I'll mention first out, uh, the depth is 20 centimeters rather than the typical 14 when you open it up. Um, we've got the aortic valve, mitral valve in the same view, so anterior septum, inferior lateral wall. Uh, this is the parasternal view. Um, and grossly what you can see is that the left ventricular function is uh, uh, depressed. So again, parasternal long, anterior septum, inferior lateral, and severely depressed left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, next case, a 65-year-old woman uh, who uh, was sick with pneumonia, I believe, and then ended up uh, having uh, uh, PEA when she went into atrial fibrillation. So what's the view? Which walls are showing? What is wrong? So again, parasternal long axis view. This is the left atrium. This is the aorta. Aortic valve opening nicely mitral valve opening nicely, um, right ventricular outflow tract, really no significant pericardial effusion, now you can see the pericardium along here. What's most striking is, of course, the thickened walls, subjectively at least one and a half centimeters thick, and almost complete obliteration of the uh, left ventricle during systole. Um, uh, so this is someone who is very dependent on atrial filling, and if that atrial filling stopped, uh, because of atrial fibrillation and it was just passive, you didn't get the atrial kick. Uh, you can imagine a uh, 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 drop in cardiac output and uh, cardiac arrest. So uh, this patient turned out to have a cardiac amyloid. So again, parasternal long, anterior septum if you're lateral, so really thick walls, uh, uh, cardiac amyloidosis, infiltrative cardiomyopathy. This is a patient who is 85 um, who developed chest pain and ST elevations. Um, uh, Again, same questions. So, a little bit more of her backstory. Um, uh, she'd had a death in the family, um, and as a result, um, uh, became very distraught, and at that point started to have the chest pain. So, again, parasternal long axis view. Um, aortic valve is sort of flipping in and out here, mitral valve likewise. Um, here's the apex of the heart in the parasternal lung, here's the base. So the base is moving, the apex is pretty much out. Depressed left ventricular ejection fraction. Um, by the way, here's your left atrium. So parasternal lung. Again, anterior septum with the aorta in it, inferior lateral wall, and severely depressed EF, uh, sparing the base of the heart. This is classic Takotsuba cardiomyopathy. Here's a ventricular gram, so injecting contrast into the ventricle in an REO projection and seeing uh, the uh, Takatsubo or um, octopus catcher. So uh, here's a question of volume status. What's the view? Which walls are shown? What's wrong? So this is uh, uh, images that I took during a code. Uh, it was a subcostal view that then I rotated a little bit, which we'll talk about more in the second lecture, and saw the IVC with hepatic vein filling. And what's neat about this is you can see some agitated saline uh, due to a fluid bolus uh, coming in um, from an injection happening down below uh, the diaphragm. So subcostal view, IVC, and bubbles in the IVC, which is a fluid bolus during the code. All right, so to review, you've um, got to recognize the marker orientation. Remember that the right ventricle is actually anterior, the thing you typically see first. Go towards the light to sharpen the image, and also in the parasternal lung, get the aortic valve, mitral valve in the same view. Um, and then you can always reposition the patient, um, uh, uh, specifically in the left lateral decubitus, to see a little bit better. Um, save your images, ask for help. At this point, we will break. Um, this is a chance, if you're with a group, to go forth and scan. And here are my references. We'll see you guys on lecture number two.